Father, Son, Holy Spirit, come now and give me peace. Holy Spirit, come now and give me peace. Guys, good day. Welcome. Welcome to Grace Ministries USA. My name is Ryan. I want to thank you for stopping by today and listening or watching our devotional. We are very thankful and fortunate that we are able to speak to people and reach people using the technology that is available at our fingertips. Guys, today's devotional for a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. In Shakespeare's play, Romeo and Juliet, famously asked, what is in a name? That which we will call a rose by any other word would smell just as sweet. That may be true for flowers, right? You walk by a bed of flowers, you get that aroma, that smell, right? But for people, names make a huge difference. In the Bible, names mean something. Parents often named their children in honor of events that took place at the time of their birth. Or they named their children for their unique physical characteristics. They put a lot of time, thought, and care into naming their children. For example, the name of the first man, Adam, means earth. Adam means earth. Because God formed him from the dust of the earth. Esau's name means hairy because he was hairy. His twin brother who hung on to Esau's heel also, he was born. His name was Jacob, which actually means heel catcher. One woman went into labor when she heard that her father-in-law and husband had died and the Philistines had captured the Ark of the Covenant. She named her child Ichabod, which means, where is the glory? See 1 Samuel 4, 21. Yet the name that is above all names is the name of Jesus. Jesus, mighty name. The prophet Isaiah told us, some important things about the name of the Messiah who was to come and also gave us some insights into the character of Jesus. He told us what Jesus was going to be like. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6, lays it out. Each name Isaiah used to describe Jesus portrays a different aspect of the work that God wants to do in our lives. If we let him, that is the secret. He's there if you allow that. We have to choose him. Wonderful counselor means that we no longer have to look to the cheap subtitles of this world. This world offers to bring us fulfillment because Jesus Christ makes life wonderful when we lean into God. The problems we face in life do not need to baffle us. We know that God will reveal his will to us because Christ is our counselor. Mighty God takes care of the demands of life that can overwhelm us. Everlasting Father means that because Christ came to earth to die on the cross, pay for our sins, and rise from the dead, 
We have an everlasting Father who will be with us forever. Prince of Peace takes care of the disturbances of life. God is with you. God is for you. And how we need that peace in these frightening times. Oh my, 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 my. At Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. In one sense, it was that. But in another sense, Jesus was never technically born. In one sense, he was born as a human and died some 33 years later on a Roman cross, y'all. But in another sense, Jesus has neither a beginning nor an end. Jesus is God. He is eternal. He is part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To us, Christmas represents the entrance of Jesus to earth. Bible said, yeah, yeah. For God, it meant the departure of his son, God's son from heaven. A child is born to us. That is earth's perspective. A son is given to us. That is heaven's perspective. Do you see the difference? My prayer is that as you go about your week, your life, when you're having those hard times, when you're struggling, when you're up against it, the pressure, the stress, the heartache, the pain, the frustration, the fear, the anger, the resentment of life, when those things come at you, and they will, I pray that God gives you the will and the know-how to turn to Him in that moment, ask for help, Understand what's happening and give it over to the Lord. I pray that you recognize we are in a spiritual battle. The fight of our lives now. It's no coincidence that God put us here now during this time. We're here for a reason, for a purpose. And if we miss it, if we focus on our feelings and what we need and what we want, we're going to miss it. We focus on God and what he wants for our life. Things will work out exactly the way they were meant to in the first place. But we have to trust God. We have to give it to him. And we have to allow him to do the work. There's an old saying that says, God can and will. God can and will. If. If, don't miss this, this is so important. If, come in close. <laughs> if we let him, okay, we have to allow God in to work in our lives. He's not just going to do it. He's not some slot machine. We have to engage him. Our heart has to be pure and true and real and authentic and, and integrity and honesty. If you're not walking in those things, you're not being honest with yourself. You're not being honest with God. First thing is to look in the mirror. Second is to get in the word. And that's just a, a, a suggestion. That's what I did. So please don't take this as a do this or else. It's not. I'm here. I want to help. I love you guys. I thank you for watching. We're trying to reach people for the name of Jesus. And that's why I'm out here at nine o'clock doing a devotional. Because it's important. And I want y'all to hear what God has to say. And I hope that you help us grow the channel and give us a subscribe and a thumbs up or a thumbs up, whatever. Just we're trying to reach people for Jesus. So thank you. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.